gives you the news you need when you need it. Everything from up-to-date news, sport, entertainment, and weather is now just a must. You also get access to a variety of multimedia clips, podcasts, full news bulletins, and the latest investigative journalism, all via RSS subscription. Get all this and more. GMA Italy Award winner Obed the Worshipper released early January 2013 his first music video, quote, I love calling your name, unquote. I love Which has become the fastest rising song ever for any Ghanaian Italian gospel yep. star and is featured on his highly acclaimed and first full-length album. Quote, the worshippers sacrifice unquote uniquely filmed in one continuous take on location in the studio at Kumase Ghana I love calling your name also take the lead as top video sent to the Ghana Italy news TV broadcast I love calling your name follows the very lifestyle of the rising star whose yearly worship and praise festival videos has received more than thousands of views on YouTube the aforementioned song was also performed live at the recent Gospel Fragrance Music Festival in Italy together with GMA Award of Excellence winner and veteran gospel artist Reverend Diana Edubaini. Music fans of Obed, friends or church groups are already singing along with the song which got over a thousand hits on its first day of publication on the YouTube. Receiving a 2012 Best Gospel Event GMA Italy Award followed by a GIEA 2012 Best Event of the Year Award. Obed wrapped up on a one-month church tour across Italy before leaving for Ghana for the shooting of the video. Obed says he's ready to launch his European tour this January. For more information on Obeduku, please log on to www. Facebook slash
Premier Silvio Berlusconi, 76, has reached a settlement with his ex-wife, Veronica Lario, 56, Corriere della Sera newspaper reported Friday, December 28, 2012. The media magnate and center-right politician will give Lario 3 million euros a month or 36 million a year, but will keep sole possession of his luxury villa outside Milan and his vast business empire will be unaffected, the Daily said. The non-consensual sentence ending a three-year legal tussle was handed down on Christmas Day in great secret, Korea said. The couple's marriage up and downs have been well publicized during their 30 years together. Veronica described Berlusconi as, quote, a dragon to whom young virgins offer themselves, unquote, accusing him of being unwell and said she could not stay with a man who frequents minors. Millions of people have gone onto the streets over the past few years, some demanding civil and political rights, others demanding economic, social and cultural rights. This groundswell is not simply a question of people demanding freedom to say what they think. They are asking for much more than that. They are asking for an end to a situation where governments simply decide what is best for their populations without even consulting them. They are asking for their right to participate fully in the important decisions and policies affecting their daily lives. They are only asking for what has been, for more than 60 years, rightfully theirs. They are asking for the human rights laid down in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is commemorated every year on 10th December. Every citizen shall have the right and the opportunity to take part in the conduct of public affairs directly or through freely chosen representatives. Every person shall have the right to vote and be elected and to have access to public service as well as to free expression, assembly and association. These rights are supposed to apply to everyone. No one should be excluded from any one of them because they are female, belong to a minority, or worship a certain religion, have particular political beliefs, are migrants, or belong to a certain racial or ethnic group. We should all have a voice that counts in our societies. Unfortunately, many people don't. Instead, they are ignored, or worse, they are actively persecuted along with the people who are trying to help them gain their rights, the human rights defenders. Sometimes it is less deliberate, more insidious. Certain individuals or groups are simply not given the opportunity to raise their voice or use their brains and talents to achieve the successes of which they are capable, to, to climb out of poverty or achieve high office. Many millions of people cannot even dream of aiming high. They just dream of getting by, of surviving until tomorrow. That may be because they have not been to school, have no health care or insufficient food because they lack the basic rights and services that would give them the opportunity to build a better future. Or it may be because they are specifically excluded from seizing opportunities by discriminatory laws or practices. Or it may simply be because their leaders are so focused on their own grip on power that they simply don't care what happens to those whose lives they govern and provide them with just enough to keep them quiet. But in the past two years, people in many countries have raised the stakes and made it clear that just enough is no longer good enough. 
In many countries, they have confronted their governments head on, not just in the Middle East and North Africa, but in other parts of the world as well. In some countries, we continue to see extreme examples of rights being trampled underfoot. Thousands of men, women, and children tortured to death, raped, bombed, shelled, shot, or forced from their homes. People deprived of food, water, electricity, and healthcare by their own governments or by armed groups apparently intent on nothing more than their own hold on power. These are governments and non-state actors who continue to behave in a way that is the complete antithesis of everything we celebrate on Human Rights Day. Today, I salute all those who have suffered so much seeking what is rightfully theirs, and all those people in other countries who are also saying, we have a voice, we have our rights, and we want to participate in the way our societies and economies are run. Because that is how it should be. Thank you. Thousands descended on Independence Square to celebrate the swearing-in of their fourth president since Ghana adopted its 1992 constitution. The new patriotic front is challenging the poll outcome in court. But the new man at the helm has promised to work for all Ghanaians. I will work to ensure that our society is less polarized and less weighted down by the pressures of our political differences. I will work to ensure that Ghana is a place where all our citizens, regardless of their religious faith, their ethnicity, or their political affiliation, will have the opportunities available to them to reach their full potential. With Ghana one of the fastest growing economies on the continent, hopes are high. Today has been, a, has been a, a glad day for all Ghanaians and all common men for us to come out, you know, to rally behind him, to discharge his duties. And we are happy Jay, is the president of Ghana. We, we, we hope that he, guys, all well, the promises he has promised, he keeps to it. And Ghana will be a peaceful country. Observers will be watching the outcome of the court challenge keenly on Thursday. Counselor Abna Osetra Edu, who is also lovely known as Teacher's Book, titled Mfansibuku Ashase, has made a big hit on the bookstores in Ghana and abroad. Granting an exclusive interview to the GINN, Teacher Abna Osetra said that she was delighted to know that her book is responding well beyond her expectation. Being a veteran teacher for the past 50 years, she said that the power of knowledge and education could never be undervalued, given numerous examples of how the book has been the pearl and in high demand by the non-formal educationists. She also said that despite these positive responses, some also underestimated the potential of the book stating that it was just something for primary schools. But to this, teacher Abna Osetra said that the secret to her enrollment at the teacher's training college was because she saw how her father, who was a national icon in state drama for the Republic of Ghana and who had had no formal education, dared to learn read and write thanks to the knowledge and reading and writing the three alphabets. Asked about some of the challenges experienced, Abna Osetra Ewuku said, Quote, I lived and worked in so many regions but never loved to learn their language because of my equipping roots. But after living in Takrati and having thought the fancy language for many years, I decided that this book had to be written in the fancy language. Unquote. This though might not seem to be so for many, this was my biggest challenge. Unquote. Quote, 
but i'm glad that it came out well and perfect just like i dreamed it to be unquote madame abna osetra who is now a voodoo is lovely known as mrs florine sedu she's been married to reverend barrister peter yao ifa edu and together they have two daughters and a son in the year 2010 her passion for knowledge and the spirit of mentorship stirred her to enroll at the ja chris bible institute she graduated in november 2012 as a marriage counselor and was awarded with an honorarium of best student mrs Flores. <laughs> Other than being a nail author, Mrs. Florine Sedu is also the caretaker of the Fiekuma Missions, a long-distance child foundation in Ghana, where numerous Italians have become parents to Ghanaian children. Mrs. Florine Sedu's book, which is now available in our leading bookstores, is now available here in Italy, and orders can be made through the Ghana Italy News Network page or email us Ghana Multi News Italy. Defender Samolinkum and A. Simbalan Sulemuntari did not make the cut as speculated by a section of the media early on. Apia will prune the register down to a final 23-man roster for the tournament after the Black Stars training camp in the United Arab Emirates. The selected pack of players include inform winger Albert Adoma, who plays in the English Second Tier League for Bristol City. The most capped player, after featuring in four Africa Cup of Nations finals, defender John Pinto is part of the squad. Head coach of the Black Stars, James Kwesiapia, mentions the 26-man provisional squad. My goalkeepers for the tournament are uh, Adam Kwarase, Fatao Dauda, and Daniel Ajay. The right-back position, I have John Pinto and Harrison Afo. At the left back, I have Kisibu Watin. The central defenders, I have six central defenders, namely John Boy, Isaac Vosa, Rashid Smaila, Jonathan Mensah, Jerry Akamenku, and Mohamed Awa. Mayfield, uh, Ajumai Badu, Anthony Anan, Rabiu Mohamed, Dari Boatin and Kojo Asamoah, Solomon Asante and Albert Aduma, Christian Achu and Andre Ayo. And I have four strikers, namely Asamojan, Boachi Adom, Emmanuel Clote, and Yaya Mohammed. The team will begin a non-residential camping in Accra from January 2nd to 6th before leaving for Abu Dhabi for a pre-tournament camping. In the United Arab Emirates, the Black Stars will play two friendly matches against Egypt on 10th January and Tunisia three days later. The team will leave for their tournament base in Port Elizabeth on January 16th. Ghana will play DR Congo in their Group B opener on 20th January before matches against Mali and Niger. Washington team will be there. 